welcome to this special edition of Harona and I'm Harona Drame. I'm extremely delighted today to have uh, His Excellency uh, Julius Madabio, President of the Republic of Sierra Leone, as my special guest on this very special edition. Excellency, welcome to the program, Harona. Thank you for having me. Well, I don't know where we are going to begin. Congratulations first for winning by a landslide, and I see that the wind of change is going across West Africa. There's a lot of new leaders in Senegal, in the Gambia, in Sierra Leone, in Liberia, and I think uh, this is a positive for democracy. Definitely it is, and uh, we want to introduce a new way of leadership in Africa, one that pays much more attention to delivering services for the people, one that has people at the center of the planning and the execution of national policies. Excellency, where did your journey begin, your childhood? Well, I, my father was a paramount chief, mm -hmm. but I lost my father when I was four, and my, my mother, a peasant farmer, mm -hmm. but she understood the value of education much more than a lot of people who went to school. Mm -hmm. And even with the death of my father, she supported me fully. Uh, we, I attended primary school in the village before going to secondary school and the uh, provincial city of Bo. Mm -hmm. And then later, I uh, decided to join the army after finishing of sixth form. Why the army? Is there a special reason you wanted to be in the military? Oh, well, I, I had to make a choice. I had completed my sixth form, and um, I was, I'd already been accepted at Fruby College mm -hmm. while I was waiting for uh, the university to reopen. I, there was this advertisement for the cadet course. Mm -hmm. I weighed my options. If I'd gone to university, I was definitely going to finish off and start looking up for a job. Mm -hmm. uh, if I go to the military, definitely it's a job already at hand. Mm -hmm. So when I finish off, I have a job to do. And as a young man, mm -hmm. I had interest also in serving my nation. Mm -hmm. And this was an opportunity. So I took that opportunity. And I was lucky to be one of those chosen because we had to go through a rigorous exercise, both physical and uh, intellectual, mm -hmm. before one is chosen to be a cadet candidate. So that was really what uh, motivated me. I wanted to serve my country. Mm -hmm. I was at a point when I had to make a decision for my future, and um, two options presented themselves. And mm -hmm. um, I looked at the two, and I decided it was better to choose the military path. Well, service uh, and patronage, patriotism and love for nation cannot be served any better than in the military and or corps of service. But your leadership, where did it begin? Generally, we see a lot of people will start at an early age, be a prefect in a school, be a boy scout, and, and, and uh, be a captain of a football team, something. Did, did you have uh, a certain inclination of leadership from a very early age on? Well, yes, um, I didn't recognize myself very early that um, I had leadership qualities which a lot of people admired. I didn't see myself as a leader, but I was born in a leadership family. My mm -hmm. dad was paramount chief, my great uh, grandfather was a paramount chief, and I grew up in a leadership family where we, we saw the display of power, how the politics went about. But I wasn't really very eager about uh, political leadership. Mm -hmm. I wanted to be an academic. That was my inspiration. But of course, growing up, I found myself leading at all times, and that was something that was given to me by my colleagues right from school. Um, Mm -hmm. The first time I realized I could lead very well mm -hmm. was when I, uh, I was chosen to be the best behaved boy. That is, after being observed for nearly seven years, uh, if you have a flawless 
behavior, mm -hmm. uh, then the school what uh, about you? We, we, we choose you mm -hmm. to be a leader. And um, another time I was choosing as the leader to instill discipline. Uh, I attended the, the government secondary school board and um, we were over 500 students at the time. Mm -hmm. And for you to be choosing as not only the best behavior boy, but to also instill discipline in, uh, amongst your peers, mm -hmm. that is a huge responsibility. And uh, by the way, maybe just to add, mm -hmm. um, I'm, I'm in the Gambia and I have a lot of classmates here too. Okay. Yes, uh, from secondary school. I didn't uh, attend uh, Fube College. As I told you, I went off into the military. But I have a lot of colleagues that I attended with uh, in secondary school. Excellent. But um, transitioning from a military person into now pursuing your earlier childhood dream of being an academic, how did you make that transformation? Because generally, we see that in Africa, when people go into the military, when they leave the military, they tend to go to security services, uh, intelligence gathering, etc. Not a lot of us go into the politics the way you are doing. Well, except for Nigeria, mm -hmm. when you look at uh, the uh, Babangidas and the Obasanjos and the Buharis. But how did you do the transition? from uh, being a military person to pursue academic and into politics? That's a loaded question. Well, I think I uh, what we have to accept in life is that change is the most constant factor in our lives. Mm -hmm. We have to change, and you keep changing. If you stop changing or moving, then you become irrelevant. Uh, it was my desire to be an academic, and I went, but I went into the military. In the military, I stumbled into power. It was never my desire to enter politics. Mm -hmm. But of course, um, when we fought the war, mm -hmm. we realized that the, the, the worst enemy of the state was actually not the rebels that we were fighting. Mm -hmm. It was the state itself, the government at the time, mm -hmm. that had created mm -hmm. the environment for the war to exist, for mm -hmm. the war to, to even start. Mm -hmm. So we decided that we needed to remove that government mm -hmm. for Sierra Leone to go forward. Mm -hmm. So that was how, that is why I say I stumbled into politics. Mm -hmm. We became uh, the de facto uh, uh, political force to take over mm -hmm. uh, uh, Sierra Leone at the point in time. Mm -hmm. Not by design, but uh, it was a necessity to continue to exist. So we fought the war for a very long time mm -hmm. uh, before we realized that in fact the main reason for the war is actually politics, bad governance, corruption, some of the things that we are still fighting today. Mm -hmm. So that, was why, that is why I keep saying that I stumbled into politics. It was never my desire, actually, uh, to, to, to engage in politics. Um, I wanted to serve my nation, but not as a politician. But mm -hmm. the more I tried to serve, the more I realized that, in fact, People had noticed my leadership qualities mm -hmm. and had trust and confidence. And trust and confidence, of course. So most times when I try to keep off, I'm always dragged back. back to it. Yes. I keep him a little corner. I tried my hand in business, but then they will still go and, and you know, you have to be our leader. And I, so few, about 10 years ago, I realized that mm. I am somebody that people look up to. And I needed to step up to the plate. And that is why I presented myself first in 2005 mm -hmm. for the leadership of the Sierra Leone People's Party, the oldest party in Sierra Leone. Mm -hmm. I didn't win, mm -hmm. um, but I still decided to, to, to stay in the party. And uh, in 2011, mm -hmm. I became the, the party's flag bearer. Now, uh, you, the um, taking over of power in your earlier years i think uh, with time you realize going the political route and changing the structure of governance itself is what will bring fulfillment to all of sierra leone and sierra Leoneans. and i think this is what where your success actually came from but um, going forward do you have a vision that makes you stand out because winning itself was a major marketing gimmick and you were standing against uh, a lot more uh, experienced politicians uh, and uh, virtually somebody who was already 
to be heir to the throne, so to speak, how did you sell your message in a distinct way that made you stand out to win? Well, I've already I served the, the, the people of Sweden, and without modesty, I would say my result, my track record, was speaking very loud. I don't want to go back to 2012 elections result, mm. but I must say that I, that was an election that I won. Mm -hmm. But we know that democracy is still to grow in mm. Africa. Mm -hmm. I, when I led, I led for the people. Mm -hmm. When it was time to go, it was not in my best interest as a person or my, my family, mm -hmm. but it was in the best interest of Sredion mm -hmm. as a country. So I made the sacrifice to move off the stage and allow Sierra Leone to move forward. In the short time that I served as head of state, I was able to, in, to initiate the peace process mm -hmm. that brought about the end of the war. Mm -hmm. I was able to restore democracy after nearly 30 years of, uh, of dictatorship. So when I handed over and left, mm -hmm. People knew that this is the this is a person mm -hmm. whose words, mm -hmm. uh, who keeps his words. Mm -hmm. um, I made a, when I made a pledge, I was going to hand over. Nobody actually believed it. They said a military man Never has serving for easy. three months will not leave office. Yeah. But for me, it was not about me. Yes, I could have stood the uh, uh, stood the heat. Mm -hmm. But then, if you look at what was happening in my country. Mm -hmm. The people were dying. The whole world looked at us as a military government. Mm -hmm. uh, let's leave them to... to, to and very fight. young leadership at the time. Of course, we are all in our late 20s. Yes. But for me, it was about the people. So I decided to initiate the peace process. And it was that peace process that continued until we, have, we got the peace that we have today. Everybody had given up on democracy. I made sure that we, 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 we did an, a, a democratic election mm -hmm. in 1996, and that was what brought about democracy again to Sierra Leone. So people had fond memories of who I am, mm -hmm. what I can do, mm -hmm. and um, they know that when I say things, I do them. Mm -hmm. So when I said I was coming back, and my programs were all people-centered, mm -hmm. like when I spoke about, I, I basically, said to them, mm -hmm. I have been here, mm -hmm. I have the benefit of hindsight, mm -hmm. and uh, our problems I have looked at in and out of government. Mm -hmm. I have my prescriptions, mm -hmm. and uh, these are the best prescriptions, and they are informed by my knowledge of what this country is, mm -hmm. and my role in, 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 in that country. So but we were able to get people to understand that Yes, we have a leader mm -hmm. who will stand by his word. We have a leader who's been tried and tested. Mm -hmm. We have a leader that is people-centered. And I presented a program that resonated very well. With the yes. masses, the yes. general public. Uh, we talk about development. It's a very complex, complicated process. We are grappling with it in Africa, and other Everywhere. nations have succeeded but they still look up to development. And uh, I believe that if we have to engage development, education, human capital is the best. We must enhance human capital to be able to take part meaningfully in the process. We must enhance the human capital mm -hmm. to be able to take part in the economic process. We must have a human capital that is um, that is up to the task mm -hmm. of development. So, and unfortunately for, we, for us, mm -hmm. most of us in the, uh, in the country, mm -hmm. a lot of people cannot pay for their kids to go to school. Mm -hmm. So for me, I Poverty decided that, is still. Yes. We've seen that, but I wanted to uh, point a major uh, issue that Africa and the world at large still view Sierra Leone as. So Leon is one of those countries that are highly literate. You have educated people, people that serve all over the world. Sierra Leone is very endowed naturally. 
But then a lot of people look at Sierra Leone and say, what must be the problem? That with all the natural resources, with all the brains and educated individuals, corruption is still rise in that country and then development is a challenge. I am thinking one of your major challenges as a leader of that country will be how to fight corruption. We are fighting corruption, but uh, I think um, I will say that leadership, the lack of leadership has been the problem. Uh, it doesn't matter how much resources you have as a country. Mm. It is how you apply, how you use those for the interest of the people. The vision you have as a leader, how disciplined you are, and why you actually came to power in the first place. Uh, we have so many natural resources, mm -hmm. diamond, gold, iron mm -hmm. ore, root mm -hmm. iron, bauxite, you mm -hmm. name it. But have we used it properly? Have we used all of these things in the interest of our people? No. What has um, transpired over the past uh, 60 years or more after mm -hmm. independence is actually um, the state mm -hmm. being appropriated by certain people mm -hmm. for their own personal interest. So what was meant for the people, what was, what was meant to actually improve the lives of people have been used for individuals. Mm -hmm. So yes, uh, people, we lost our, our position as, as, as the anthems of West Africa mm -hmm. because even the Fubé College, which is supposed to be one of the best universities in in, 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 in the world, in the or in, in, it in was Africa, powerful, yes, yes uh, fell alongside with the state. As the state deteriorated, it went down with it. Mm -hmm. Now we are trying to recover all of these uh, treasures and rebuild them again. Mm -hmm. So, yes, we've had uh, very good people, we've had uh, some of the best educated people, but mm -hmm. how, but th that has not impacted positively on development. Yes. Because of national leadership, we have not have had a dedicated leadership that is actually people-centered. When you think about the people, when you are doing things for the people, mm. that is what we want to provide now, a leadership that is dedicated to the welfare and well-being of the ordinary people. Is that why you went into free access to education, for example. We've looked at your record, and in a very short span of time, we've seen that you've become a catalyst of change, mm -hmm. uh, leading education, for example. Um, and then we've looked at the rights of women, children. We're seeing that in a very short period that you've been the president, you are going against 60 years direction. Are you not swimming against the ocean? in this because your policies seem to be very different. Uh, you think you have the prescription right? Yes, I think my diagnosis is correct and therefore my prescription is right. Um, we cannot talk about development in the middle of corruption. If corruption becomes a way of life, it will choke off the development process. It is a direct threat to development process itself. It is a a threat to national security mm -hmm. because when you have a lot of young men sitting on the street because they have not been provided with adequate education, mm -hmm. they are a threat to national security. Mm -hmm. When funds that are meant to improve the lives of our people are used otherwise, it's a threat to national security. So coming back to something you asked earlier about corruption, we are going to fight corruption. There is no two-way uh, 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 measure about that. We, if we don't succeed in fighting corruption, if we don't fight corruption and win the war against corruption, we cannot develop as a nation. So that is an imperative. Definitely it is swimming against the current. Mm -hmm. But I think we have developed, um, we are resolved. As mm -hmm. a leader, I am resolved. Mm -hmm. And I've encouraged and motivated my, my my cabinet and leadership to believe that this is a war we must fight and this is a war we must win if we mean development for that country. Um, talking about education, mm -hmm. there is no way you can develop. There is no way you can be useful in the 21st century without education. There is no way you can meaningfully take part 
in the development process without quality education. So for us, it is building the foundation for Sierra Leone to pick up after a long slog. Hmm. We have been retrogressing for a very long time as a nation instead of making progress. So now, if we have to move ahead, we have to make sure that we are doing so from a solid foundation. And that is the foundation we are bringing discipline back to society, uh, giving um, uh, uh, account of your stewardship to the nation, mm -hmm. making sure that monies that are meant for the people provide those social services that are meant to improve the lot of our people. So the fight against corruption, we are going to continue. Um, we realize that a lot of kids are dropping out of school or don't go to school because they, they afford cannot it. afford school fees. So for me, that is an obligation to the state. In the 21st century, you are not fit for purpose if you don't have quality education. Can the state afford it? The state can afford it if we can stop corruption. So when we decided to just block the leakages in three months, we raised enough funds to pay for all the kids to go to school in Sweden. So we took over in, in April, mm -hmm. and by September, we launched a free quality education without a cent from anywhere else in the world and without meeting anything in the kitty, in the treasury. Mm -hmm. So what has been stolen or what had gone astray or what was going astray was what we put together. And because of that commitment, Politics can be interesting. We can be respected as leaders if we keep to our word, if we provide for the ordinary people. I pledged to the people of Sweden, I will provide free quality education. Not because it is cheap, mm -hmm. not because I want to win election, mm -hmm. but because it is genuinely the foundation. Sound education is what all nations are built upon. If we don't have it, you can talk about the 17 uh, sustainable development goals. Mm -hmm. But how can you tackle development mm -hmm. when you are not educated? Three out of five Sierra Leoneans cannot read or write. This will be surprising to someone like me because you're supposed to be one of the most literate in the sub-region. We used to be, but we f that all of that fell apart, fell apart. because um, we, the, 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 the state did not invest in human capital development. <clears throat> With all the diamonds and gold, the monies had gone away. So that is what we want to do. There's gold, there's all the resources, some of them are still there. Mm -hmm. What we want to do is to use the proceeds from all of these resources to develop the human capital. One day, the diamonds are going to finish. Mm -hmm. The gold is going to finish, the iron ore. Mm -hmm. But the human capital will still be there. And if you have, if we, succeed and we have to succeed in improving that human quality mm -hmm. it becomes a capital in itself that we can actually thrive on that is what other nations are doing around the world nations that don't have a single uh, natural resource mm -hmm. are wealthy nations because of the human capital the quality of the, the quality human capital. they have invested in human capital so um again like i said we are a people-centered government I realized that we have to help the ordinary people. The, those who could afford it, it was expensive for them to pay for their kids. Mm -hmm. If you have three, four kids in an, uh, the average African family, mm -hmm. that was taking a chunk of their earnings. Earning. So taking that off the parents is a big help. And making sure that our population is getting educated. Nobody has a, uh, an excuse, excuse not to go anymore. to school. There yes. is no excuse. They say it's not possible. It's too expensive. You cannot pay for it. But today it's going on. And it's a reality. I don't know, Your Excellency, how much of a good painter you are. But I'd like you to paint the picture of the future of Sierra Leone as you see it. A small, beautiful nation that we lead development, that we be an example coming from obscurity, one that has been f almost forgotten about, known for the worst things in the world, wars, mudslides, Ebola, corruption, worst maternal mortality rate. We are going to change that picture. And using technology, 
we want to catch up with the rest of the world. And uh, the pace at which we want to do it is what is going to astonish the world. And we will do it and others will catch up with us later. Any final words you want to say to young people of Africa, aspiring leaders, uh, people who are supposed to be change agents? What would be your word of advice to them? We are in Africa, and Africa is the place to be. Don't risk it to go across the Mediterranean and die. We have to stay around. We have to work very hard. There is no reason to travel out there and go and become a sweeper or do odd jobs. This is where everybody is coming. It is the place for the next century. We should be here, we should stay here, and lead the process. What I see is a second scramble for Africa. This time, it is, it, it, it is being done in a way that is different from, from the... Um, 18, uh, 1887 during so. colonialism yes so we should not leave what is good to go out there and suffer we should understand that our continent is going to lead it's going to be a struggle we are ready for that struggle and we should stay here and fight to support the process of development it doesn't come by easily that is one thing we should be ready for the change. We should work as a continent. That is why we have the African common position, 1.2 billion. We have no representation in the permanent structure of the United Nations. That is because we have not taken ourselves seriously and we have really not pushed the world order. Mm -hmm. We must stay together, work together. Every Everybody says from the darkest continent, the hopeless continent, now they are saying this could be the, the next continent. Yes. So why is it that they don't even want to recognize us at the UN, at the National, uh, 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 United Nations Security Council? So we have to stay together. We are a strong people, Africans. We are 1.2 billion. We are a force to reckon with, and with quality education, hard work, innovation, and lashing onto science and technology, we can change our continent, and it will be the place to come. So we shouldn't be living. Thank you very much, sir. It's been an absolute pleasure Thank you. having you on my program. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank mm -hmm. you very much. Mm -hmm.